Yo. Yo. What's good, gang? What you want? Nothing much, bro. Just reading my Bible. The Bible? What you reading the Bible for? This is how you feed the spirit. To feed the spirit. What does that even mean, though, bro? So basically, when you have the Holy Spirit... Yo, I got two females right now. That's trying to chill. They said they got. They said they got the. They said they got a lick tree, and they had. A, they had a hotel right now. What you trying to do, bro? Oh, what are they trying to do, bro? What you mean? What they trying to do, bro? They trying to get a jiggy, bro. I'm trying to clap cheeks, bro. I'm trying to go crazy. What's up, bro? What's the move? What you trying to do, bro? Yeah, I'm cool off all that, bro. But you could go ahead, though. <laughs> bro, they don't even want me to slide if you're not sliding, bro. Damn, that sucks. But do you know what the Bible says about sex before marriage, bro? That's crazy, bro. Tripping, bro. What it say, bro? What it say, bro? All right, so this right here is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators. So right here it says the fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're a fornicator, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not enter heaven if you are a fornicator. Right here, this is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18. Flee fornication. Like, run away from fornication. Fornication is the act of having sex before marriage. Every sin that a man does is, with, is without his body. But he that commits fornication sins against his own body. So every sin that I commit is outside of the body, is outside of my body. But the sin of fornication, I'm sinning against my own body. My own body. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God. You are not your own. For you are bought with a price Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Right here where it says you are bought with a price, you're bought with the precious blood of Jesus. His blood. You're bought with His precious blood. And the Holy Spirit living in you. That's God's spirit dwelling in you. This body is a temple. That's why it'd be like temple and this, that. This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So you trying to tell me you never had sex, bro? You try to tell me you never had sex, bro. I did. But I am not born again. I repented of all those things. I'm born again now. And now I'm waiting to have sex inside of marriage. The way God intended for things to be. So what if you mess up now that you're born again? Sometimes you have to slip to feel how hard the ground is. But some people, they slip and they slip and slide. They slip and they keep on going. But sometimes you have to slip and feel how hard the ground is so you don't fall again. Okay, bro, but like, I love sex, bro. Like, I think I'm addicted, bro. Like, I love sex, bro. Like, I think I'm addicted for real. Bro, I know, bro. But look, God created sex. God put sex on this planet for us, for this world to be pop repopulated, we can have kids. Every human being is a product of sex, bro. Sex is only a sin. Sex is not a sin. Sex is only a sin when you do it as fornication or you cheat on your husband or wife. Then it becomes adultery. But God created sex. But see, God created sex to be in the context of marriage. But Satan wants everyone to have sex whenever, wherever, whoever, 
no matter the cause, no matter what. Go go to the club, go find somebody to have sex with, or one night stand. But God created sex to be more than that. In the context of marriage. Tell me this, bro. Imagine if your girl never had sex with no guy before you, and you just had her. That'll be fine, ain't it? That's how God created things to be. And the same thing for you. If your girl, if you never had sex with nobody, your girl would be happy like, wow, he never had sex with no other girl, only me. It's special. But right now, everybody's had sex with everybody, and then people, it's just crazy. And it's a lie when the world says it's just a physical connection because it's a spiritual connection too. Sex is like gluing two pieces of wood together and then ripping them apart. See, God intended sex for you with your wife to be forever. Because in, in the spirit, you guys are becoming one. That's why the words of God says you guys become one flesh. And now you have to tear yourself apart. That's why the breakups be so hard. Because you guys connected yourselves into this. You guys connected yourselves and now you guys got to rip yourselves apart. And it feels like you lost a part of you because you did. It's a spiritual connection. See, God hates fornication. God hates sin. But God hates fornication because it goes against everything he intended, it, intended for sex to be. See, God wants you to have sex inside of marriage. Because you were never supposed to break up. You combine yourselves as one and now you have to break up. But he never intended you to break up. That's why it's till death do us part, bro. See, God wants you to have sex in marriage and the devil wants everybody to have sex with everybody. There's a whole bunch of sex going on. And it shouldn't be like this, especially in the church. See, sexual sin will cause you to lose your, your, your sight, your vision. Sexual sin will lose you to lose sight of what you're aiming for, your goals, aspirations. Sexual sin will destroy you. Sexual sin will, will make you act out of character. It will make you lose your common sense. Tell me when there's times you've had sex with females and, and, and you start to act out of character. You're like, what am I even doing right now? You start to think about them, this, that. You just, you start to act out of character. Here's, and here's a scriptural evidence of, of losing your common sense. Samson. In the Bible, Samson, strong, uh, chosen by the living God. His hair was his strength, but he was falling into sexual sin. And he had this one girl, Delilah. And she kept asking him, what's your strength? What's this? What's that? And then he kept, nah, nah, nah. and then one day he just told her. And then boom, chop, chop. See, sexual sin blinded him. Told her everything. And they used her to get to him. You become a slave to anything you can't walk away from. But with Jesus, anything is possible. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. See, our, our natural sin nature, of course we love sex. And, and, and our natural, we, ha, we all have desires we should not act on. It's not wrong to have those desires, but once you act on them, that's when it becomes sin. That's why you need the Holy Spirit living in you and then you live by the Spirit and you don't live by your flesh. Because the Spirit will never fornicate. The flesh will fornicate. The Spirit will never commit adultery. The flesh commits adultery. That's why you got to walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. See, bro, do you know where the F word comes from? Fornication under carnal knowledge. Fornication under carnal knowledge is where the F word comes from. And when you have sex, bro, you can't, you, got to, you have to worry about STDs. Because you can't protect yourself from sexual transmitted de demons without Jesus. So, yes. You can get sexual transmitted demons, bro, from having sex with somebody. So I gotta be saved, sanctified. Let me tell you the story of this guy. He said he never struggled with depression. But he met this girl and he started having he started fornicating with her. He started having sex with her. And then all of a sudden he just started being depressed. He didn't want to go to work, he didn't want to do nothing. And he always 
he always liked to work. So it was really weird. And then he stopped and then he felt better. And then he slipped up and had sex with her again and then felt that, that cloud of depression over him. See, your demons become their demons and their demons become yours because you guys have become one in the spirit. So all their demons and all the things they're messing with, they go, they go, they have legal rights to you now. You probably never had suicidal thoughts. You slept with this girl that's always had suicidal thoughts. Now you just you had one like the other night. You're like, what the? I'm not about to kill myself. Sexual transmitted demons. See, and that's how you can get soul ties too, bro. Yo, how do you know if you have soul ties though? Like. How do you know if you have like some soul ties? Cause I, I feel like I, got, I feel like I got some for real. And some ways you can know if you got a soul tie is one, you just constantly think about them. The relationship could have been done probably like ten months ago, four months ago, one year ago. And you're just constantly thinking about them. You can't get them out of your mind, no matter how hard you try. Two, you could be with somebody new, and all you're doing is thinking about them. You you visualize yourself with them. And you feel like you can't move on. You feel like you're still stuck with this person. No matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you try to be with other people, you just keep thinking about the other person. You just feel like you can't move on. You feel like you're doing something wrong. You feel like you shouldn't be doing this. You just can't move on. Three, you visualize yourself with them. And you just, you want to get back together with them. You visualize a future with them still. And that goes back to the thing I'm talking about with common sense. Because... You've probably seen a relationship where it was so toxic, but they just won't break up. You're like, why won't they just break up? Because they can't. I'm telling you, they're combined already spiritually, so they just feel like they can't leave each other. A relationship that's just so broken, and they're probably just abusing each other. There's abuse in the relationship, mental abuse, physical abuse. And you're like, why doesn't she leave? Or why doesn't he just leave? What's wrong? I'm telling you. They're connected as one. And they lose their common sense when sexual sin is involved, bro. You lose your sight. You lose your vision. You lose your eyes. You can't see what's right in front of you. But once you break up with that person, you're like, okay. Yeah, I'm never going to go in a relationship like that again. I've learned. You know, this was a good lesson. Because your eyes are open now. You broke the soul tie. You're away from them. You're over them. And you're like, why was I even... You, you see that you had no common sense. Like, why was I even taking that? I'm never going to take that again. Because your eyes are open now. And some other ways you can know if you have a soul tie, bro, is just if you truly feel like you have a soul tie. You could be like, I truly, I really know I have a soul tie to this person. If you feel that way, you probably have a soul tie. This whole world is just hurt, bro. This whole world is searching for peace, but they ignore the Prince of Peace. Only Jesus can change this whole world around. You think you got some soul ties, bro? Dang, bro. I definitely got some, bro. I definitely got some, bro. Hey, we could break that right now in Jesus' name. If, it, if you want to, bro, we could break that right now in Jesus' name. Yo, how? How? How we do it, bro? And I'm not having sex no more. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. How? How can we break them? Let's do it. Like right now. For like yesterday. Hello. So if you made it this far to um, the end of the video, thank you for watching the video. If you learned something, if this video helped you, share it out. Help me spread the word of God. I I'm believing Jesus to break all the chains and all, all break off all soul ties to anybody that watches the video. And I'm going to tell you in a few minutes how to break those things off and how what to do would help. But first, I wanted to talk more about fornication and sex before marriage and what it. And we, just, this, we just live in, a, in a, a society where they glorify sex. You know, if you're having sex, you're cool right now. And if you're not having sex, you're weird, you lame. You know what I'm saying? It, it, sex is backwards the way God created it. Because people have sex first and then they try to build that connection. But, but that's already a bad foundation for, for a relationship. You guys have sex and then you guys start acting like you guys in a relationship. Like, hey, baby, baby, hey, this and that. But like, if you like just hold off sex just for marriage, you really get to know somebody. Like you really get to know, you really get to fall in love with who they are and you have a strong foundation for that relationship and that marriage. It's not just sex. 
Because I'm telling you, you take you take sex out of a, of any relationship, out of any marriage, it's just well, you just left with that person. You really gotta know that person. You know what I'm saying? After sex, like if you're married, after sex there's bills. After sex there's kids. After sex there's life goes on. Sex is like for like 30 minutes, one minute, one hour. However long you say this, that is temporary. Everything is temporary that we have to keep chasing. If you're, if you are in love with sex, you'll never be satisfied by sex. That's why you gotta keep having. That's why you're always thinking about it. You know, Jesus will set you free. Jesus has set me free. Jesus has set many other Christians that are waiting for marriage set free. You can be set free in Jesus' name. So soul ties. Soul ties can be caused by having sex, man. You know, this whole world, we just have a bunch of soul ties. You or somebody you know could be having soul ties, you know. And you want to break them off your life. And this, I believe in Jesus to break these off. And if you do it, um, this video says you will be free. The who, he who the son says free is free indeed in Jesus' name. So soul ties, man, you can just get them by having sex. That's why God doesn't want you to have sex before marriage. Because God never intended you guys to break up. When you guys have sex, if and you, and you guys break up, if it, the, that's why the breakup so. That's why the breakups are so hard, because you feel like something has been taken from you. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you guys get cheated on too, that's even worse. If it's like, why would you even do that? Because common sense is like, why would you even do that? Like we're together, you know. And then you're gonna go with somebody else and bring yourself together with that person. And then with with that, that's why people try to get a rebound. Like, this is what God revealed to me. That's why people try to get rebounds and, and get a new person so quick. Because you just had a soul tie. You were just tied together with somebody. And now they're gone. Now you just crave that. So you just go quickly. That's why some girls, they go on to uh, have a sex spree. Or guys, they go on to have a sex spree. We're just trying to find something just to attach themselves with. You know what I'm saying? They just want a, another girlfriend, another boyfriend so bad. Because soul ties. Be content with Jesus, man, you know, and wait till he gets you the right one. You know what I'm saying? We don't need to go through these spiritual battles. And, and you know, having sex fornication is an open door to the enemy to get legal rights on you until you just cut that off. You know what I'm saying? You know, some ways to know if you have a soul tie is um, you just think about that person 24-7. A relationship could have been done years ago. You still think about them. You obsess over them. You still think you guys are going to be together. You think we can be together one day. No matter what happens, one day we'll be together. You know, you're with another way you can know if you have a soul tie is if you're with somebody and you just think about them. You're having sex with another person and you just think about them. You know what I'm saying? You think you're having sex with them, or you're with somebody else and you just think you're visualizing yourself with that other person. You know what I'm saying? Another way you can have a soul you can know if you have a soul tie is you obsess over them. Like you, you're gonna know if you're obsessed over somebody. I don't gotta tell you the, the the key points of knowing obsessing. You know if you're obsessing over somebody. You know, you can um sometimes you can um go places just to be seen by them. You do things just to be seen by them. You know what I'm saying? And you do things purposely to get them mad, or you purposely do things that remind you of them. You know things like that. And then also, if you if you really just think you have a soul tie, then you probably have a soul tie, you know, because you wouldn't just want to think that, you know. So if you think you do, then you probably do. Some ways you can break off that soul tie. Number one, forgive. Forgive them. You know, forgive them and be okay with moving on. Anything is possible with Jesus, man. I'm telling you, it could be hard right now. It could, be, it could seem like I could never move on. It could seem like this and that and third. But anything is possible with Jesus. You know, let that forgiveness go. You know, you can say this. I forgive, yada, yada, yada. I release them of all the pain they caused me. I forgive them of all the pain they caused me. And, and don't hold no bitterness in, in there for them. You know, don't forgive them because they deserve it or, or anything, anything else. I forgive them for you, for your healing. You need to heal. So the one thing you can do to break that soul tie is say, I forgive them. I forgive, yada, yada, yada. And I release, yada, yada. And then you just say their name. You know, just keep saying that. Another good thing you could do is throw away anything they gave you. Any gifts, anything they gave you. Demons can attach, latch on to gifts and objects. So anything they gave you, anything that reminds you of them, just you could just throw it out of the way. And say, I release this person. I release it. Yada, yada, I forgive this person. You know, just throw away whatever they gave you. You know, and, and forget about it and just move on. You know what I'm saying? Also, cut them off. Just burn that bridge. Don't, no bitterness, no hate, no unforgiveness. You just 
You, you, how are you supposed to heal if you keep cutting open that wound? You know what I'm saying? You gotta heal. So I would say cut them off. You know what I'm saying? Not no no bitter, no hate, no beef, no nothing. Just to do better for you and just to heal. Cause you're never gonna heal if you keep picking that scab, cutting up on that wound. Every time you text them, you, you start to get the butterflies, you start to feel this way and that because of them. Cut them off, pray about it, pray for them in Jesus' name. And then you could just say, I break the unhealthy soul tie I have with yada yada yada. yada. And then you say their names. You know, in Jesus' name, you say, in Jesus' name, I break this soul tie, you know, this unhealthy soul tie, this deadly soul tie. I break this soul tie in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus breaks every chain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In Jesus' name. This is a spiritual battle. It's not just the physical. Everything happens in the spiritual first. I break this soul tie between me and in Jesus' name. You know, say that. Also, fasting. If you don't know what fasting is, you know, you could um, read the Bible, there's Isaiah 58 fasting, and then the way I usually fast is I pick a day where I don't go nowhere, I stay in my room, I don't eat or drink nothing, and I just give that day to, to, to the Lord, you know. The Bible is your spiritual food and water. You know, Jesus is that living water, you know what I'm saying? But fasting, Jesus said, some demons can only be casted out with prayer and fasting. So you could fast for this soul tie to be broken. Say, Jesus, I can't do this soul tie no more. I'm a fast. You know what I'm saying? So during your fast, you just pray. Uh, um, fasting without prayer is starving. You got to pray. You got to be praying throughout the whole day about anything, everything. And you can just pray about that one situation. Um, worship him. Worship God. You were created to worship. You know what I'm saying? And, um, watch some sermons. I like to watch Billy Graham sermons. You know, you can watch any sermons. You can watch sermons on, fa uh, on fasting, on soul ties, on forgiveness. You can watch sermons on anything Jesus related, you know. And then, um, yeah, just pray, worship, read the Bible, read the Word. Please read the Word. Um, how can you know anything without reading the Bible? You know, somebody could tell you something that's not in the Bible and you're just going to believe it. You know, how can you want to hear God but your Bible is closed? How can you want more of Jesus but your Bible is closed? You know, read the Word in Jesus' name. I like King James Version, you know. I like that version, but read the Word for real. So do a fast, throw away the objects, forgive. In Jesus' name, I break this soul tie, and I'm going to pray over you guys, too. Let me tell you the greatest news you will ever hear. See, you probably had sex before. I had sex before. You can be forgiven. God came down here on this cross and got crucified. A throne, they, put a throne, they put a crown of thorns on him. Jesus. No other religion... Their God or their person died for them. No other religion. That's why not all religions can lead to God. Because there's only one that paid the price. Many religion. there's many men that want to be God. But there's only one God that became man. I'm telling you, Jesus came, died on the cross for you. His blood is the forgiveness of your sins. We can never earn it, get it, be good enough on our own. We can never do that. We can never, God is perfect. There's a sin problem. There's still that sin problem. You could be good and, and, and this and that, but there's still that sin problem. This is why we need Jesus. This is why we need his Holy Spirit. This is why we need his forgiveness. That's why we need to rely on him. Because there is an enemy out there walking around like a roaring lion seeking to devour you. Kill, steal, and destroy. Don't, why are you blaming every bad thing that happened in your life on God? Without the bad, you would never appreciate the good. God is good. God is love. Give your life to Jesus, and it's the best decision you could ever make in your life. Not a raise, not having a baby, not marrying your wife. Giving your life to Jesus Christ is the best decision ever you can ever make. Speak from experience. But thank you for watching this video. If you liked it and it taught you something new and you got set free, send it to somebody else. Set somebody else free. Helps me, help me spread the gospel. Do something, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pray over you guys and, and, and see you on the next video. <sighs> Father God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord Jesus. I thank you for saving me. Father God, I thank you for everyone listening right now, Jesus. I thank you for everybody right now that's listening, Lord. And I pray that you continue to use them for your glory, Lord Jesus. 
And I pray that you break every soul tie that this person is dealing with, Lord Jesus, that they want off their life. I break that soul tie in the mighty name of Jesus, every chain loosened and broken in half in Jesus' mighty name, Father God. I break every word curse spoken against this person. I break every generational curse spoken against this person, Lord Jesus, and I speak life over them, Lord. I speak life and peace into their heart, mind, and soul, Lord Jesus, and I pray that you reveal yourself to them. Father, break off that soul tie that is tearing them apart, Lord Jesus. Help them come to you, Lord. Help them refocus their eyes and, and put it on you, Lord, and help us know that our identity is only finding, found in you, Jesus. Help us forgive because forgiveness is hard, Lord. Everything is hard if we don't do it, if we, if we do it apart from you. So I pray we never do anything apart from you. I thank you, Father, for this divine appointment, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Y'all stay prayed up. Keep the faith. I'm going to see you on the, on the next video, all right? In Jesus' name.